Chicago is my kind of town. Chicago is Grant's lack of a mustache. Chicago is... Oh, a real mixed reaction. Oh, wow. wow. Joe's tiny wiener. Here's the thing. I make fun of this poor guy all the time because he's my best friend, and that's what best friends do. But it's important that you know that I've never actually seen him naked. <laughs> I haven't. I've never stared at his, his situation, seen a, a misplaced photo of his... Little Joey Jr. Or, or even stood next to him at a urinal and accidentally violently sneezed and my sneeze just threw my gaze down in the direction of his boys. It's because you don't use urinals. You're afraid I don't. of them. <laughs> I'm a stall man. <laughs> sure, he's Irish. So it's the low-hanging fruit, pun intended, <laughs> to make fun of the typically small Irish sausage, or a banger, as your people call it. <laughs> However, I've known this man for over 10 years, and the way he carries himself, the way he reacts to certain things, his whole worldview, and just every action that I've ever seen him do in person leads me to believe it's just a little roll of dimes in there. <laughs> just half a... Half a pack of lifesavers. That's all he's got going on down there. Why don't you show everybody what you... It's <laughs> <laughs> a family show. I really think we need to review your definition of best friend. <laughs> I know. Is this what toxic masculinity is? Yes. <laughs> I've always wondered what that meant. <laughs> I learned something today. What's up, Chi-Town? Ah! Chicago! People up there, let's let's get off of wieners because I just got off yours. I don't know where oh. I was going with that. I don't know where I was going with that. Um, I have been looking forward to coming back here ever since we left this city over two and a half years ago. Can you believe it's been that long? Two and a half years. Too long. I love this city. Chicago's the perfect love child of my two favorite cities, Boston and New York. It's a great sports town. It's a great drinking town. And when the, f the top food options are like deep dish pizza and, and overstuffed hot dogs and Italian beef, you don't feel bad if you're having a chubby day because everybody's having a chubby day here. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's what happens in this heart attack waiting to happen disguised as a city. We're amongst our own here. <sighs> That said, I'm gonna give you a little trouble here. I can't imagine ever choosing to live here, right? That seems like a weird choice. Let me explain. When I finished college, to me it was like, I'm either gonna to move to New York or I'm gonna to move to LA. The Harvard and Yale of cities. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is kind of like a safety school of a city, right? <laughs> Up top? It's kind of like a James Madison University of a city. Maybe a Penn State. A Wyoming Polytech, that's what it is. <laughs> that's what Chicago is. My kind of... <laughs> no, I love it here, I really do. I, we need to start coming here twice a year when there isn't, yeah. Twice a year, at least. Can we do two? Can we do two? Would you do two? <laughs> two, two. two? We will two. do it the second there isn't an airborne disease that could kill all of us. Then we will do it. But everybody here is vaccinated. Thank you, thank you. This is what it can look like. Do you remember the before time? No, I don't. <laughs> Must be tough if you're single now. You meet somebody at a bar and you, you go home and wanna punch a one-way ticket to sex town. <laughs> Used to be all you worried about was getting herpes. <laughs> Now herpes would be a delight <laughs> if you could wake up and breathe and taste food. <laughs> well, now I'd like to introduce you to four men who remind me of herpes. Because now that I have them, I could never get rid of them. <laughs> 
Every once in a while, there's a flare-up. This is true. <laughs> this gets real bad. <laughs> we got there there for a while, and then just a week later. Oh, there they are. <laughs> they're, well, they're back again. They're back. I must be stressed. Yeah, but you can't give, but you can't give us to other people. <laughs> I can't. Says you, Matthew. <laughs> Says you. Speaking of which, I'd like to introduce you to the Al Capone of playwriting. <laughs> Because not only does he have a Napoleon complex, but he too will one day die of complications due to syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew Capitacaz, everybody! Matthew! Look at him, can you see him? Can you see him in the balcony? Or does he just look like a gray M&M? Matthew, if you had a vault like Al Capone, what would you keep in there? Let me guess, books on self-righteousness? <laughs> I mean, books. Books, definitely books. <laughs> I would be like Burgess Meredith in that Twilight Zone episode. <laughs> I would just go I down there and read. Books. <laughs> it would have been time now. Matthew was very mad at me pre-show, and I think oh we God. should talk about it. I wasn't going to talk about we should it. Just, we should discuss this. I want to get it out of the way because I don't want us to have this thing the whole to, show. We need to clear the air. Yeah, we need to clear the air. And I want to get everyone's If you think opinion. this is a bit that they're launching into, it's not. It's no. not. And I'm very uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. It's about to get heated. In... Well, this is going to, maybe I shouldn't say this. In the green room, there is a couch. Now, where it I come a, from. It, it is a large couch. It, it, it's two sides of the room. It's two whole walls of the room. Still a couch. Can you please a... let him finish his opening statement? Yeah. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't see this couch and be like, that looks like a coat rack. That looks like a <laughs> coat. No, it looks like a couch. So I did what every, any red-blooded American would do. I sat on the couch that was full of their shit. Well, Mr. Ladi Da comes over and he gets so mad because I'm laying on his bag and his coat and his new glass cannon hat that I bought you. I own the company too, Troy. I paid for it as well. <laughs> <laughs> he got you on a technicality. <laughs> a higher percentage of that hat belongs to me. <laughs> The point is, he came over, and you would have think I punched his wife in the stomach. He was like, what are you doing? My sunglasses are in there. Now, if I had expensive sunglasses, which I do, I don't bring them with me, but that's a separate problem altogether. I wouldn't leave them on a couch where people sit. And he comes over, and he's like, let me see this. Oh, and my jacket's wrinkled in my hat. You could talk. Is my turn now? Yeah. Okay. Literally, there's like 30 square foot of couch. And I walk in there, into the green, and everyone, everyone just walked in, just put their stuff down on the couch. I did as well. I walk in there, and I see Troy after, like, he's, in, he's in his pre-show mode, which is just you know, awful for all of us. I don't like your tone. And he's just like full on, like on a divan. <laughs> Directly, he's sitting on my bag and jacket. And the hat, I pick up the hat, and the brim is like <laughs> bent upwards. And I'm like, now, and the other, the other complicating factor is that Troy has already broken one pair of my sunglasses. Which I didn't know. Which I didn't know. In my defense, I had no idea. I had to go buy another pair, which he then promptly sat on. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's just you, like, there should be hazard warnings around you. I got a lot going on. I can't focus <laughs> you know, you on know what I did when I sunglasses in their coat. <laughs> you know what I did when I walked into the room? I was going to sit down next to Troy and talk about characters, and then I saw what happened. His backpack was on the space next to him. So I just picked up his backpack, moved it 12 inches, and sat down. Don't clap for that. Don't clap for that. Like a human being, Troy. Like a human being. That's what Matthew said, sort of at the height of it. And he was serious. He was like, are you even human? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry I sat on your jacket and Thank your Thank you hat. for apologizing. Oh, I appreciate well, see, and that didn't happen in the green room. What happened in the green room was Troy yelled back. Yeah. <laughs> then he got up and he went for his sixth trip to the bathroom. <laughs> Not sure what's happening in there. And about six minutes later, he comes storming back in and is like, I would never put a coat <laughs> on a jacket. Like, still just yeah. <laughs> True contrition. Yes. Thank you for your apology. I'm going to put a coat I rack in our rider from now on. <laughs> Great. I'm not going to let you use it. <laughs> Next up is a man as tall as the Sears Tower and twice as ugly. Give it up for Grant Berger! Grant, Grant. The Berg! How you doing, Chicago? 
Grant, what did you do today? Did you ride your bike across the surface of Lake Michigan at top speed, you weirdo? <laughs> I walked on water and I healed the sick. Oh, Troy. thank God. Yeah, no, I, uh, I think I did an hour on the elliptical. Then I did a little uh, arm stuff because my shoulder's getting better. And then I worked on some shows work that are coming up. So that's exciting. That's a full day. <laughs> Including some, uh, some Delta Green that's coming up pretty soon. <laughs> It's gonna be so cool! I can't wait. <laughs> um, you also made a uh, drug delivery to Joe and I. This oh yeah, morning. I got a text message this <laughs> morning. Hold on, let me just read this text message. <laughs> wait, I'm hold, waking up. I'm hold getting on. ready. I'm having a bit of a cold brew, wait, and wait, I get wait, a message wait. from uh, 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 Troy that says, "7:56 a.m. Hey, buddy." If you get up and go to take a swim in Lake Michigan or bike to Wrigley Field or whatever the <laughs> hell you do in the morning, would you pop by and bring 45 Advil to Joe and I? <laughs> <laughs> they say you're the pill man. <laughs> uh, and then he said, out of that, he, he tried to be nice. He said, don't go out of your way. Only if you have it to be heading out. And I had to say, you're missing a magic word, Troy. And then he wrote, please, with 32 S's. I did. <laughs> Please. <laughs> I thought the please was implied, but he showed up like a trooper, and I thought it'd be a fun bit, because Joe and I were in rough shape, uh, courtesy of Goose Island Bourbon County Stout last night. Why did I even make that? It's poison. Uh, and so I thought it'd be a fun bit to like pretend I was uh, buying drugs from a local dealer. And so I, I had my boxers on. I mean, I looked like I got hit Dude, by a car. Dude, it was pitch black in <laughs> our room. <laughs> Grant yeah. knocks, and Troy like, shuffles up to the door. Like all hunched over, and I just see a crack, and like a little light comes in. <laughs> With the the, uh, the lock holding. is on the door, that I can only pull it like an inch away. <laughs> and I put a paper bag out there. I'm like, you got the stuff, man. <laughs> <laughs> I did receive payment. I asked for a banana, and I received it. It's true. <laughs> I said, come on in. Here, you want a banana, handsome? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. By then, I got a lot of bananas when I had the mustache. That's though. how they got King Kong. That's how they got King Kong. And then I offered him, like, you want to do some of this with us? That was a fun little early morning bit. We were... Joe is still not recovered. No, I feel terrible. You also I went to bed at, like, 9.30 last night. Uh, yeah, but I woke up at 4. <laughs> I, uh, I uh, took Grant's Advil, and about an hour and a half later, I turned to Troy, and I was just like, he gave us placebos. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only possible explanation. <laughs> Joy with us. He could have given us anything. We're a control group. <laughs> he cut. He cut the Advil with, I don't know, vitamins. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, next up is the Michael Jordan of computer hardware problems. <laughs> Give it up for Skidmore. <laughs> Yeah! Skid. <laughs> For a man who built his own computer, it's amazing how often you're stymied by its functions. I figured it out. <laughs> I think I figured it out. I think I figured out what was happening. You always, there's times when you're just like, ah, like a child that started a grease fire. You're like, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Are you having fun here in Chicago? I love Chicago. I love coming here. I always loved Chicago. I, I was recognized uh, in, in Grant Park today. That's fun. Uh, Jack, Celebrity. are you here? Did you make it? Jack? No, he didn't make it. But uh, <laughs> Big fan. Super fan, Jack. Is it, <laughs> that's the thing. Like, we run it, we've been running this into people. This has happened people. multiple city stops on this tour. Yeah, Probably they, every city. We, keep, we run into people. It's like, oh, shit, it's a glass candle. I'm a huge fan. It's just like, oh, you coming to the show tonight? He's like, you're doing a show here? <laughs> None of them even know that we're doing a show. It like happens. We really constantly. have to buckle down on our marketing because I don't know what the fuck else we need to or do. Or sometimes they know it's a show. They're just like, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> but it's so great to meet you guys. Like, no explanation. Not for me. <laughs> Sorry, I got to do literally anything else tonight. <laughs> the one time you're in my town this year. <laughs> but it was funny because he, like, he started, he's working security at some like, events like in the park. He's like, skid, skid. Glass cannon skin. I was like, what the fuck? I've got my headphones in. I was like, oh, he's like, oh man, like I'm such a big fan. Like you're great. Like I've emailed the show. And I'm like, oh wow, that's awesome. I'm looking at his like security partner, this woman. I'm like, huh? Like you try to en engage other people in conversation, and she has no fucking idea who I am. So I don't know why I keep doing that. Uh, but <laughs> but it was great. It was awesome. I feel it's like a, that's the only time I actually feel like genuine fame is those moments, mm -hmm. and luckily, they're very few and far between. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully. Next up. Oh, man. Here we go. How do we, 
There we what go. do I even say about that? No one was better at being losers than the Chicago Cubs until they finally won the World Series a few years ago. <laughs> this next man is like the Chicago Cubs, but he's still waiting for that World Series moment in life. <laughs> Give it up for my friend and yours, Joe Bryan. Yeah! <laughs> Chicago Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I love Chicago. I really, oh. truly do. It is great to be back here. Great yeah. to be back here. Well, yeah. you were a real party animal last night. <laughs> I think we have some photographic evidence of what kind of party animal Joe was. All the guys came no, over. No, 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 no. To our hotel room. There it is. You didn't. Oh God! That was uh, that was taken at 9:45 p.m. last night. <laughs> Look at that little angel. <laughs> we were all we were all Troy invited us all to their room, and we get there and we're hanging out, we're doing a little work, we're having uh, having a little drink, and then Joe like just loud, goes loud conversations, right. and Joe just goes straight to sleep. Straight, straight to sleep. No, no, no. Right before I went to sleep, I put in my AirPods and fired up a Stellaris tutorial video, <laughs> and. I think Troy was like, are you watching a Stellaris video? I was like, <laughs> so angry because everybody's hanging out. I'm like, you're right. This is I'll really show rude. You. So I just took him out, closed my iPad, and immediately went to sleep. <laughs> and it wasn't like he was just like sitting somewhere and he fell asleep. He went and changed into his pajamas. Yeah. Yeah. And then curled up in bed under the blankets. Yeah. <laughs> I literally <laughs> think I got poisoned at Goose Island Brewery. <laughs> I truly do. My night just went shoo, right. I felt great for an hour. Well, it wasn't and then just I fell the off a cliff. Island, right? I think I see the reason why you pass out, Joe. <laughs> the jalapeno Pequods, baby. Oh, Delicious. it was very, these, very good. These three good. gentlemen to my left were sweating, yeah. just eating one tiny bite of a jalapeno pie. <laughs> insane. This guy ate four slices of that Pequods pie. Four slices. I didn't think it was possible. I think it nearly killed me. It was worth it, though. <laughs> <laughs> I am so excited to be back here. Uh, Joe said earlier today, it'd be great if we could just play Strange Ions but not do a performance. That would be fun. Uh, but that is a testament not to us not enjoying the performance, my favorite fucking thing that we do. It's a testament to how much we love this particular game and this particular story. So, we've chatted long enough. Let's get into it. Grant, let's take it to the recap. Oh, yeah, they got it. They got it. <laughs> there was some argument as to whether people would get that and be excited, and they, they did get excited. Yeah. A lot of crossover wrestling and uh, nerds. Yeah. Nerd fans. <laughs> oh, the recap. This one will be short. Can you believe last time we were in Chicago, it was our third live show of this Strange Aeons mm -hmm. tour. That's how long ago it was. It went L.A., Philly, and here. Now this is our 28th show. 28! Wow. We were but children in the matters of this narrative back then. Though one of us was already on their second character. Yeah, I remember this as being like a breakout place. This was like the first time I really got oh. into the new character and yeah. Red Hot. That it was the start of the 2019 tour. Chicago was amazing. It's where we met Angeline, who does all the art for our amazing posters. They're the best. Thank you, Angeline. It's where you announced that you were going full time with Glass Cannon. That's where I announced I was going full time because of you guys. And you cried like a baby. What a day. What a day. Well. Those halcyon days of wandering around Briarstone Asylum are over, but one could argue it was safer in the confines of that sanatorium than it is on the mean streets of Thrushmore. Aldo Casimir, Halster Price, Atticus Grimm, and Sir Juliandros. They've been in town for a couple of days and they have been busy. Everyone except Sir Julie used to work for a man named Count Hazerton Lowell's the Fourth, the leader of this town. They were his thugs, his flunkies, his hired muscle. Lowell's had them committed to the asylum, and somewhere along the way, they lost their memory as well. The Count.
town is gone, but a lot of people from this town are gone. We were admitted to the asylum for amnesia. Were you? Well, ostensibly. Were you? <laughs> I want to find out. Were you? <laughs> A lot of people are missing from this town because they're being sacrificed by this cult of the king in yellow. They're kidnapping people, sacrificing them to power portals to another world through these monuments throughout town known as the Star Stelae. You now know that they were using these stelae to teleport about town, passing through an alien nightmare city on the way and leaving a sooty mural of that strange city behind on the walls that they used to teleport about. That's why there's all these murals. It wasn't that weirdo artist. It was the Star Soleil. The four of you activated one of these monuments and stepped through to discover all of this, but also realized that one, there are other dormant and possibly even more dangerous powers teeming within the Soleil. And two, there is a third Stila somewhere on the grounds of Iris Hill. Great pronunciation. I wrote it in a way that I would pronounce it. You wrote it phonetically. <laughs> S-T-E-E-L-A. Well, after, for, after uh, clearing out Fort Hill course, you learned more about what's happening in town. Lyle's assistant, a woman named Melly Sen, is orchestrating all of this, it seems. So after finally clearing out the floor, for it, you rest and make your way to Iris Hill, but not before being in intercepted by a hired assassin who nearly killed Halster with a death attack before you just mopped the floor with her and murdered her in cold blood. She had... Don't cheer for that. She had notes about the four of you, what you look like, where you've been, and what you've been up to since you came to Thrushmore. She was hired to take you out. Someone is out to get you. So finally, you arrive at Iris Hill, which is surrounded by a giant hedge with only one way in, the gatehouse. So you knock on the door and are told by a pair of eyes behind a peephole that the estate is not receiving guests while the Count is away. You don't like that answer. So you break in and you find a cultist of Haster and two creatures known as Kuru, these cannibal tribal barbarians covered in tattoos with sharp biting fangs. You pass the gatehouse into the main grounds to find an estate in disrepair. Weeds poking up through cobblestones, destroyed flower beds, a manor house, and four outbuildings. Rather than go straight to the manor house, you decide to check on the outbuildings first, and as you walk towards one, you notice that three overgrown topiaries surrounding the fountain in the middle of the estate grounds come to life and attack you. You are now at Iris Hill, staring down a giraffe, an elephant, and a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds so ridiculous. <laughs> it may be. But the rest of this book is no joke. Whoever said this is a children's game? <laughs> roll for initiative. Yeah. Roll, 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 uh, 14 for Eldo. Not bad. Not good. <laughs> Sir Julie Andrews. 15 for Sir Julie. Equally shitty. <laughs> How's the price? 12. Oh. Oh. Sorry, Chicago. Atticus Grimm. I got this. Now it's 14. <laughs> <laughs> Who's got the higher in Ishbone? I have plus seven. What's your bone? What's your bone, Skid? Uh, six. Oh. Well, then. And where are the topiary? Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> little help here, LaValle? They're these green guys. The one oh. up top here, that's the, what did I say, dolphin? Donkey? That's a donkey. <laughs> dolphin. <laughs> no, it's a donkey. And then this guy over here to the west is a giraffe. He looks like the Toys R Us giraffe. It's kind of fun. Aww. They had some fun with Jeffrey? Yeah, Jeffrey the giraffe. Remember him? Yeah. Now we're Was bankrupt. 
Was it Jeffrey with a G? <laughs> I think it was. <laughs> Children buy their toys online. Uh, and then this is the elephant right here. Look at that son of a gun. Uh, of course, the elephant's the frontline fighter. That's right. They know what they're doing. <laughs> this isn't their first topiary fight. <laughs> All right, let's sort this. Oh, man. Round one. Let's do this. Living topiary number two. Who is the, uh, let's see, he is the, uh, oh, good, he's the elephant. He's coming after Halster Price. Flat-footed Halster Price, mind you. And he's going to try and slam you. Let me see his reach. All right, he's going to have to take a five-foot step. Uh, which means he can slam twice. So five foot step, just this elephant rumbles towards you. Is it like a baby elephant? It's rather small. Uh, it's yeah. a small elephant. Okay. A pachyderm. Aww. Well, they're all pachyderms. It's like Horton. <laughs> Wait, it's Horton. Horton, here's a who. No, I think Horton was a full size. Horton was a, Dumbo. He was a full sized elephant. Horton was a full size elephant. All right, Dumbo. Dumbo? I've never seen it at Disney there were elephant. There were elephants in the field museum today, and they were a little bit feisty with each they other. Were, they were oh. fighting. They were fighting. Yeah, like these guys are. Well, then this will remind you of that. As they slam Halster, power attack is on. Here we go, slam. 12 to hit your flat-footed. Miss. Oh. Second slam. 20 to hit flat-footed. That's a miss too, Troy! Oh. What a beast. Woo! What a beast. All right. Well, this is going to separate the men from the boys, I see. This guy up here, the giraffe, just charges at Sir Julie. Oh, no. With the grace of a giraffe and goes to slam her <laughs> with power attack on against flat-footed. <laughs> what is... Uh, just, just so I can imagine it and I can uh -huh. picture it in my mind. With what part of its topiary body is the giraffe slamming me with? The neck. Okay. Just <laughs> <laughs> down. That's what they do in the wild. All right. I got a good picture of it now. That is going to be a 17 against flat-footed. Miss. Come on! Yes! <laughs> I got to take power attack off. All right. It is Sir Julie's turn. Uh, Sir Julie is going to swing back at the, uh, at the giraffe. Yeah. Okay. Power attack is on. Power attack is Furious on. focus is on. Okay. Uh, that's going to be a 23 to hit. You hit everything. Yes. That is a hit. 23 points of damage as well. Oh. Yikes. So Ooh. phenomenal. Okay. Uh, and I'll take a five-foot step. You will. Yes. All right. Okay. It's fine. It is Atticus's. Watch this. Atticus's turn. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, I should look at my sheet. <laughs> uh. Atticus is going to look across at these things. I've seen many tapieries before, but never seen them come to life. What are they? What is powering them? Uh, I'm going to do a knowledge check. Wha knowledge what? Knowledge uh, topiaries. Arcana, uh, maybe? Knowledge uh, yeah, nature. Oh. This can't be natural. Uh, ooh, 24. 24. Knowledge nature. They are creatures known as living topiaries. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Living topiaries. You, you, were so, you were so happy to sit, wait for that knowledge check. <laughs> Crushed it. Anything else you want to know? That's not my fault. That's, that's a Paizo naming issue. <laughs> <laughs> Needs to be a little spicier than that. Uh, yes, I want to know if they have any uh, particular resistances or defense defenses. They have DR5 against slashing. You mean DR5, but only slashing gets through. That's what I meant. Uh, <laughs> I know, yeah. Ten years. They have... <laughs> Dude, ten years from now, I still won't know how DR works. <laughs> no, you will not. <laughs> I've just got a gap in my brain for yep. like how DR actually works. Um, oh, this will be helpful. They have a plus, plus six to stealth and undergrowth. I love those kind of abilities. When they place them in the adventure in a courtyard with no undergrowth. They are, okay. uh, they are immune to mind-affecting effects. Ah. And, and they have other immunities like that. So I'll let you, as the rat wizard... Okay. Are they vulnerable to fire? Sorry, it's not your turn. <laughs> I'd love Lovely. to help you out, but... Uh, all right. In, in that case, um, Atticus is going to... 
see how uh, this all shakes out. Uh, they don't seem to be hurting my allies too much, uh, so he's going to uh, delay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Like he's looking across and he's just like, interesting. Well, so Julie's got them covered. So does Halster with their weapons. They won't have a problem. I'm sure the fire is going to do quite a bit of damage. Uh, why waste my time and energy right now? And so he will delay. Always the showman. <laughs> it is Aldo Casimir's turn. Okay. Uh, Aldo takes a cheeky step to the east to get a better angle to see this uh, elephantine... Uh, uh, believed foe here and he shouts out I heard that elephants never forget well I hope you don't forget to die <laughs> <laughs> and he throws a bomb yeah candy bomb Ooh. oh skid <laughs> could you get Horrible a little arc throw. on that buddy was that a uh, yeah, peanut that butter was cup? bad that was very Skittles. bad the Skittles, Skittles right ooh Ooh. Right. Skittles. Uh, Skittles. Oh, I see. Now yeah. I get it. He hates that nickname. He hated it so much. Yeah, it was good. All right, so <laughs> I'm going to throw the bomb. This against Touch AC. There's a minus four because the target is in melee. Ah. That is a... Ooh, that is a seven. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, let's see what square it lands in. Oh, roll a D8, no. and don't roll a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Don't roll a 6 on that D8, or it lands on Halster. Uh, 2. All right, so it lands just to the north, which means uh, it will take some splash damage. Okay, as does Halster, actually. Um, don't you have that thing that doesn't have your allies take uh, splash damage? Yes, it does, but I have to hit my target for that to actually work. Glad we clarified. Stop complaining on the boards about it. Thank you. Uh, so that is a DC 17 reflex save. Shockingly, the cat-like reflexes of the elephant <laughs> are not enough to stave off <laughs> the full brunt of the splash damage. <laughs> okay. The elephant takes eight points of fire damage. Oh. Getting started. How's Halster doing? Halster crushed it with a natty 19. Ooh, uh, Halster takes a mere four points of fire damage. Sorry, sorry, best friend. It feels like a hug when you hit me with splash damage. Oh, mate. <laughs> You're oh, my right. best friend. You do see the elephant rear up on its hind legs in agony as the fire hits, and you see, hmm, mm. perhaps vulnerable to fire. Hmm. Have a little fire, Scarecrow. Have a little fire, Scarecrow. Ah. It is uh, Halster Price's turn. Yeah, I don't want to burn any of my sweet self buffs on the living topiaries outside of the places we're actually going to, so I'm going to drop uh, Red Destiny at this point uh, because it's a piercing weapon and uh, draw uh, my Cold Iron Kukri. Okay. A mouth on the ground opens up and eats your sword. Oh, man. It is a Cthulian nightmare, this place. Um, Halster quickly mourns the loss of his beloved sword and swings out. Here comes... Uh, that is 24 to hit. Oh, that is a hit. My goodness. Nice, nice work. Um, 11, uh, no, 8 points of slashing damage. Okay, nice. so slashing does get through. It's in, uh, it's in rough shape. The splash and that hit, it's not looking good. That is one ready-to-die elephant. But now... It is the hedge to the north, the mighty donkey. The mighty donkey. What's the donkey's <laughs> name? <laughs> the donkey's name? Yeah. Well, obviously it's Jesus Weinstein. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus does this ability known as hedge stride because that's what Jesus would do. <laughs> and he a swamp appears right next to Atticus. Oh, oh no. Swamp. Ah! Jesus! Jesus! <laughs> Atticus says. Round two. Oh, uh, Atticus will go. Uh, Atticus will go. He'll go. Hey, fuck that! And he will withdraw. <laughs> <laughs> Full withdraw. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Jesus! I'm out of here! 
disappears in front of him. Oh, God. Oh, dear Jesus. It is. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> We're all going to hell. It is the elephant's turn, and he's mad. So he takes two slams against Halster. First one is a miss. Second one is a natural two. Another miss. Yeah. yeah. You Suck ain't going to touch Halster. You ain't going to touch. I'm leaving power attack on. Two strikes against Sir Julie. First one, boom sauce. 22. You got me by one. Oh, oh no. Here we go for some damage. 11 points of Ooh. damage. Okay. Oh, you didn't like that. Hard. Let's see if you like this slam. 21. My AC, exactly. Oh, oh, two hits in a row. All right, min damage, eight. But that's 19 altogether. Sir Julie looks like the lights are about to go out on this once great night. <laughs> in that moment, even Jesus Weinstein turns <laughs> and pities you. <laughs> <laughs> and it is Sir Julie's turn. He's not going to pity her in a second. Sir Julie will swift action lay on hands. And then uh, turn and deliver what she hopes is a devastating blow to the draft. You need more than one attack. I would love more than one attack. Uh, get there. 18 to hit. That's it. I rolled it. <laughs> 24 points of damage. <laughs> oh. It had 24 hit points left. Oh, yeah. yes! Yeah. Nice, dude! So like it is effectively His name is disabled. John C. <laughs> So overblown for that. Uh, all right, so it is it is disabled. It will take one attack, and then it will fall unconscious unless someone else takes it out. I it will is. take a five-foot step. Okay. Well, that sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it is Aldo's turn. Aldo. Oh, wow. Uh, okay, Aldo is just, like, wincing at the flames licking over his best friend's face. So he's like, ooh, sorry, and he sees that the... Don, this is a donkey, right? Jesus, yes. Yeah, Jesus, the donkey. <laughs> and uh, you he's, found Jesus. And out of in almost a panic, he shouts, uh, "Get away from me, Jesus!" <laughs> <laughs> and he throws another bomb. Uh, <laughs> Get some mark this time. Come on. Yeah. 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 yeah! Nice catch. Bottle catch. Uh, that is a 15 against touch AC. That hits Jesus. Yes! Uh, that is 13 points of damage, fire damage. Yep. Just burn, Jesus, burn! <laughs> <laughs> Go back to hell where you belong, Jesus! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Glass cannon out of context. Here we come. I just, <laughs> this is the kind of comedy I love. Just no, no, right up to the line. <laughs> yeah. Seeing it's how like, far no, we can take it. No, no, it's okay. The, the donkey's name was Jesus. Right. That's what people may not get. The donkey's name was Jesus. Jesus did love donkeys. Look it up. Donkeys all over that testament. Too many, if you ask me. It's Halster's turn. Uh, Halster shields his ears from the sacrilege and continues to strike <laughs> out at the elephant in front of him. Um, I'm going to lose so many subscribers. Uh, <laughs> 21 to hit. 21 to hit hits. Okay, that is going to be a nasty seven points of damage. Wowza. Yeah. Taking luckily. an entire trim off the top. Ooh, man. Oh, man. That was, uh, what was that, uh, the elephant? Ooh. Yep. He is unhappy. His trunk has been removed. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Troy. Yes. You're oh. no better than a, an ivory hunter. Oh. It's a... Uh, the ivory hunters aren't after the trunk. <laughs> <laughs> I think the trunk is an aphrodisiac. Someplace. That's the horn. That's, That's a rhino rhino's horn. horn. All right. We'll talk about this later. It's Jesus' turn. <laughs> <laughs> and Jesus is going to stampede towards Aldo. Oh. And slam once. I feel a crit coming on. I feel it coming on. This is the die that just chains 20s. Not a 20. 17 with power attack. Miss! Come on. Yeah! Your AC has gotten better. Yeah. It's Atticus's turn. Atticus the Thrilling. 
He withdrew last round after a delay. <laughs> what are you going to do this time? Light up a pipe? Perhaps. That sounds delightful. Uh, he's going to look over at the giraffe. He just turns to the side, sees it sort of wavering on his feet, and is like, what are you still doing up? And he's going to uh, do a ray of frost nice. at it. There we go. Uh, ranged touch zoni. That is a 20. 20. To hit touch. You slide this ray just between Sir Julie and the edge of that building you were going to check out. And it hits the giraffe, and the giraffe freezes to death. Boom. Yeah. Get out of here, yes. giraffe. <laughs> Welcome back. It is. Topiary time. The giraffe, unfortunately, is dead, but the elephant yet lives. One slam against Sir Julie, one against Halster. I'm keeping power attack on because I believe in myself. First one against Sir Julie, 22, bro. Oh, man, he is lighting you up, dude. <laughs> he is. Why don't you put your sunglasses on? Maybe you can see this damage better. Oh. Max damage, 13 points of damage. You know what? This one's coming at Sir Julie, too. Ooh. 19. Miss. Oh. There we go. Woo. Well. Know, after they had their fight, I came up to Troy, and I, I told him I took his side in the argument, and it finally paid off because he attacked Matthew twice. I knew what you were doing. We all knew what you were doing. It was very clear to us. <laughs> it was very clear what it's was like, happening. fucking Grant. I can't <laughs> always gaming the system. Smart. He's a smart player. <laughs> 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 Just puttering up the GM. It is uh, Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie, you stand next to an elephant, and <laughs> this is what you see at your feet. It's just... It's not completely accurate. Hold on. Let me put a blood pentagram on it. <laughs> <laughs> because shockingly, as it fell, a pentagram appears. It's just... You've never seen anything like this, even after all your years in the world wound. <laughs> but that is what is 10 feet away from you. <laughs> Horrible sight. What is going on at Iris Hill? <laughs> what uh, do you do? Sir Julie will swift action lay on hands and then take a, uh, a swing at the elephant. Okay. Uh, that's going to be an 18 to hit. That is a hit. Yes, kill it. 20 points of damage. And the elephant falls. There yes. we go. Yes, Sir Jules. <laughs> Good job, Sir Julie. Uh, Aldo, what are you thinking? Uh, Aldo is going to take a five foot step back towards Atticus. And out of his bandolier, he's going to pull another vial, and he's going to and drink it, and he's going to cast Cat's Grace on himself. Ooh, Ooh nice. Cat's Grace. Talk to me about why you're doing that instead of taking the attack. Are you nervous about getting hit? Um, yes. And it will, I, I missed with the bomb, and I almost killed my best friend in the world. Right. So this will increase my chance to not do that. I like oh. it. That's just smart. Thank you. All right, it is now Halster's turn. Halster, you see that poor, poor dead giraffe. Yeah. And then you also see a now dead elephant. Jesus! <laughs> Jesus! <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Just horrible. Jesus. And it, too, has a pentagram. Oh, oh no. come on! Do what are the odds? so soon. You can get that off. Screen. What are the odds? You know who's not going to like this? <laughs> Jesus. Not going to care for this one bit. Jeepers. Crow. What a sight. What do you do? <laughs> well, I don't... I'm Good not really question. making any value judgments here whatsoever, but just historically speaking, my odds are pretty good in a fight against Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you Grant or you Halster? Halster. <laughs> So Halster's going to charge Jesus. I think you can take Jesus. And strike In him a down. one-on-one -on -one fight, I think Halster can take Jesus. The Halster. donkey. The Hair donkey. Jumps. Charges at Let's Jesus. not get confused here. We don't mean the religious figure. We're talking about this donkey whose name happens to be Jesus. Please don't get it misconstrued. 
Uh, that is a 17 to strike Jesus. 17. That's going to hit. Oh, great. Uh, six points of slashing damage. Hey, you know what, though? It all goes through. Yeah. Every little bit counts. If only there was a cartoon donkey that I could think of. Dominic. Donkey. Yeah, or donkey. Shrek. Oh, Never seen that. Well, now it's too late. Oh, Eeyore would have been good. Eeyore's great. Sorry, I asked. Eeyore is a stuffed, is a magically animated stuffed creature. Well, it is. What's your, what's your point? It is. I know. Geez. I said you sounded angry. In my mind, it just felt like it's, it, it, this is a topiary donkey. It just felt like it would be too. It's just too weird. What? That's too weird. Yes. Why? I don't know. We all have our lines, kid. Okay. All right. I'm just <laughs> curious. And for me, I guess it's A.A. Milne. <laughs> Man, I got some images here that I cannot put on the screen. <laughs> don't. That one. Oh. I don't, I don't want to see this. <laughs> it's just a cartoon Jesus riding a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> just can't do it. There are lines. I want to... Can we turn the parental restrictions on the venue router, I please? I so. always think about, like, my son is going to watch this someday. My, by, both of my sons. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> like, my dad's a loser. <laughs> glad he's dead. <laughs> I'm glad he's dead. <laughs> All right, guys, let's be serious. Not, wait, the, the best part is that, like, your, like, great-grandchildren might be able to watch this, provided the world doesn't end. But, like, right. And then they'll be like, they'll just stare at it. Wondering. What happened to you? What happened? What happened to that man? <laughs> All right. Let's be serious. If we're being serious, can we please get this desecrated intellectual property that isn't ours <laughs> yeah. off the screen? <laughs> Joe, hold on. It's Jesus' turn. <laughs> and I'm going to slam Halster twice. Power attack. I'm leaving power attack on. I'm going to live and die with power attack. First attack, 18. Miss. Second, man, I got to roll high to hit you. Okay, 21. Miss. Dude, he's got AC for days. Brutal. Jesus ain't got nothing on Halster. <laughs> <laughs> it is Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie, two beloved cartoon characters lie dead at your feet. There's only one thing left to do. I'm going to charge Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Finish him! <laughs> uh, that hits, and... That's going to be 20 points of damage. As Jesus falls, <laughs> he looks at you, and in his topiary language that you somehow understand, he says, it's pronounced Jesus. Oh, uh, oh no. Oh. I he thought, was so ignorant. I thought he was going to forgive me. <laughs> there are some things even Jesus can't forgive. <laughs> The three God. animals lie dead. <laughs> in Your line was Eeyore not being right for this, but not. Okay. There are less people here now than there were 10 minutes ago. <laughs> Thanks for being in it for the long haul. <laughs> uh, all right. Major props, everyone who stayed. Yes, thank, you. <laughs> thank you. We made it through. You're the lifeblood of our industry. All right. You come in here, you get past the gatehouse, uh, the cultists, these cannibal kurus, then the topiaries come to life. This seems like something a druid would be involved in. You already know that Meli Sen was working with this druid that you killed in the cave, sending sleep-inducing drugs to her. There's this giant hedge around the estate that was seemingly grown overnight. So you have to wonder, what's going on here? However, now you have four smaller buildings all two story one here to the south that you were heading to and then three to the north and then you have the manor house and a fountain do we have a wand of cure light wounds now I can't remember I think you got one. we do have one and I'm carrying I would it. love a, 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 a hit or three <laughs> yep while he's doing that, Atticus is going to go to the smaller building to the south and detect magic. Oh. See if he detects any magic within the building, seeing these magically animated living topiaries. Okay. I like it. Um, 
Let me stall while I look at what it is. <laughs> That's not what it is. I wrote the wrong thing. Talk to me about how you... What, you, <laughs> what does it look like somatic component-wise? Like, are you... Do the hand motions what for What does it. that look like? <laughs> Can you do it? Can you do the... <laughs> you do detect magic. I do detect magic. Yes. Okay. And then uh, how many R's? Going to hold it there. Going to hold it there. You detect three. Oh. Of magic. Uh, any more powerful than the other? Or are they all pretty equal? They all seem to be uh, the same. Okay. Kind of low level, low level junk. Okay. There is magic within. Nothing too powerful there. Halster, are you feeling well? Can you go in? Yes, I'm just finishing up healing Matthew via text message, so it doesn't end up on the show, but now you've ruined that. <laughs> so, like that. yes, I'm happy to go first, Atticus, yes. You're healed for 18 points of healing. Wow. Darkus. Nice. That's good. Nice work, best friend. It's all the want. That's what I say. What do you do? You've detected three auras of low-level magic within this small building. The smallest building on the property. Aldo's like, hey, Tori, this spell only lasts so long, and he's like pop and lock, and he's like using his increased dexterity to the utmost. That's fun. Halster, let's go. Halster opens the door. Halster opens the door, and you see <gasps> a small room with no stairway. So this one doesn't have a second floor. It just has sort of a... Oh. It doesn't have a second floor. Ordinarily, you can tell that from the outside of a right. building as well. Well, it was deceiving. <laughs> it was deceiving. There was a window up there, but nothing. Uh, it is outfitted with an outhouse and an external awning that's sheltering firewood there to the southwest. Inside of it is a wooden bathtub and a fireplace. There's a small shelf that holds bars of soap, towels, brushes, pieces of pumice stone. It's a bathhouse. We take several hours to bathe. Bathe. No. For the, for the first time in months. <laughs> okay. Time passes. <laughs> and you're all clean. Uh, focusing in on that to take magic. What is magical? Uh, what three? Three bars of soap. Oh. Oh. Uh, spellcraft to detect what it is these okay. things are exactly. Damn it. Uh, 16? It's enough. It's really nothing fancy. It's known as soul soap. Oh. Soul oh. soap. <laughs> this it... small bar of coarse gray soap has tiny pieces of ash, coal, or hard earth embedded in it, making the use of the soap uncomfortable and leaving anyone washed with it as dirty as they were before they washed. So it's joke soap. It's joke soap. It's joke soap. <laughs> Washing a creature with this soap requires water and takes one minute after which the creature can attempt a new will saving throw against any hostile ongoing mind affecting effect Whoa. currently affecting it. Unwilling creatures must be pinned or otherwise made helpless before they can be washed by this dirty oh, yeah, soap. soap in their mouth. Wow. Each soap <laughs> is enough to wash one person, so it's like hotel bar soap. <laughs> uh, I'll take them. I'll take the three bars and put them in a bag. Just you never take know. Your soul soap. soap. What are they called again? Soul, soul, soap. soul, soap. soul, soap. soul soap. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta have soul soap. Um, and as I said, there is no second floor because I lied. All of the buildings except this one have a second floor. This is a one-story building. At first, you said, that looks like a second floor, but now that you're out of combat, you're like, what was I thinking? That was just silly. That's a one-floor building, if ever I saw one. Shall we check out the next outhouse? Uh, sure. Uh, I will do one perception check in there, just oh, to yeah, see if there's good. anything, any yeah. secret door. Uh, secret bottom Sign. floor or something. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it does have a second floor. Uh, 12. 26. Neither of you see anything. Sir Julie sees nothing even better. She's, um, it's a specialty. What about this one? 
and he points across to the outhouse to the north, the outhouse, the uh, outbuilding yeah. to the northeast. <laughs> um, yeah, let's check this one out. Okay. Uh, same thing, detect magic. Are there any magical auras coming out of it? You do detect magic. Oh, right. Settle in, how many auras? Hold, Holster. There is Settling in, how many you. auras, huh? That's how a great many? question. I was assuming you were going to check that. A lot. Several auras of magic. Several auras, yeah. Yeah, there's, legit, there's, there's several auras of magic. Okay. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll step door. back. You guys do your thing. Halster opens the door. Halster opens the door. And there are two people inside. <gasps> oh. oh! Lovely dress. Let me... Thank you. <laughs> I'll you. describe the room to you first. It is a, uh, it looks like a pretty well-appointed lounge, like a guest house lounge. There's a brick fireplace in the corner, a mahogany table with three matching chairs, and an antique sideboard liquor cabinet near the foot of a set of stairs going up, a flight of stairs. Sitting around the table is a man and a woman uh, dressed in the finery of nobles and they seem to be sipping wine uh, from crystal goblets. You open the door suddenly, and the man, like, puts his hand over his chest, and he's like, oh, oh, hello, and uh, who might, who might you be? You startled me. I could ask the same of you. Okay, that's quite fair. Uh, my, my name is uh, Asa Lilith, Lilith. Uh, and this here is my uh, companion, uh, Daylene Spence. Uh, we are from uh, Caliphas. Yes. Uh, is that enough uh, for you to tell me who you are and where you are from? My name is Atticus Grimm. Atticus Grimm, a fine name! I'm glad you like it. Oh, I, uh, we do love wondrous, fun things. I'm happy to see you in such high spirits in this rather dreary place. Oh, it is. It is terribly dreary here, but there is a certain charm to it as well. Uh, I see you have some other friends. I, I don't want to be rude. What What are your names? A knight? I am Sir Julie Andrews. Sir Julie Knight Andrews. of the Dawnflower. Oh, the Dawnflower. I hear she's cool. <laughs> she's the coolest. Oh, <laughs> And you, sir? They call me Halster Price, servant to the Lady of Graves and general creepy guy. Oh, well, everyone loves a good creep. Phrasma, yes, another fun little god. And what about you, my bomb-covered friend? Oh, uh, and he leans over to Atticus to say, let me talk to them. Okay. <laughs> and he just <laughs> kind of like... Shuffles aside and like switches places with uh, with Al Alice Halster and Atticus in front of the door, and um, just really casually like pulls a bomb out of his bandolier. Oh, <laughs> sir, sir, sir I, I don't know what uh, He's you holding, think holding. you might be doing, but we are uh, we are not uh, friend foes here. Uh, perhaps you, we could we could talk about this. I I, I don't know what you uh, what you think of us. Sense motive. Could we perhaps talk? Natural 20. Oh, oh, you got him! Got him! Sense the hell out of that motive. I Did anybody roll higher than a natural 20? <laughs> Four. Four. It's a 20. I got a, I got a dirty 20. A dirty 20. And the woman speaks up, and she's like, uh, "Please, please, I, I don't, don't, don't listen to him. If, if he said anything to offend you, I am, I am quite sorry." And he says, "Yes, I, I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I think we got off on the wrong foot here. I, I, I apologize." And you do sense there's something a little off about them, but they have no weapons on their person that you can see. They are dressed in the finery of nobles, and they don't seem to be threatening you. Sense motive can also be used to determine if somebody's under some sort of mind control. Okay. That's true. Enchanted. With, sense enchantment. And what was your total with the nat 20? 28. You don't get that sense. 
What are you doing here in this house? Did you not notice the topiary outside came alive and tried to kill us? The topiary outside came alive and tried to kill you? No, this place is an overgrown mess, and it doesn't surprise me. Uh, but perhaps we could just chat for one second before we uh, get into bomb throwing. Um, I can tell you, I can tell you where, where we are from. And he's shaking his wine glass. He's like, we, 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 we came to Thrushmore uh, after, after hearing that a, a royal accuser was, was sent to uh, uh, sort of investigate the erratic behavior of, of Count Laos. Yes? Do you know about this? Are yes. we on the same page? Yes, that is why we are here as well. Well, I, I must admit, when we heard this, my lover and I here are always interested in a good scandal, and the, the rumor mill seemed to indicate that there was perhaps occult forces to blame for all of this, so we did not hesitate. We packed up our belongings in a trunk and uh, uh, boarded a ship heading uh, north to Thrushmore. We, 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 we knew right when we arrived that things were strange here. As you no doubt you see yourself, there is a veil about this town. Do you not feel it? Do you not see it and sense it? We've seen through the veil. Oh, yes. Well, that is where true wisdom lies. And perhaps you think that we are covered by that veil as well, which is why you come in here ready to start throwing uh, tinctures and bombs around. Either way, call us crazy, call us weird. But we like following up on strange occurrences like this. Even when they lead to nothing, it adds a little, little spice to the bedroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Did you Doesn't it, my dear? And she's like, shut up. <laughs> who, who else is here in the grounds? On the grounds? Well, um, well we, uh, there, there is a young woman uh, in charge of the state. Um, what is her name? Melisen. Me Me Melisen, yes. Melisen. Uh, when, we, when we first came here, looking after what happened with the Count, uh, she greeted us and, and, and let us stay here in the guest quarters. She said we could stay until the Count returns. I'll tell you, if you would ask me, I think she saw that we had a little bit of money in our pockets and uh, did not dare turn us away for fear of reprisal from the nobility. Perhaps she saw in us uh, uh, someone that could be a benefactor to the Count. That is not our interest. We just want to see what weird shit is going on here because it gets us horny. <laughs> but listen... All this talk is making me thirsty, and it is rude of me to not offer you a, a drink at least. Perhaps that's why you're ready to throw a bomb at me. It's because I didn't offer you uh, some wine. So uh, just take some a bottle, uh, some glasses from the liquor cabinet. Relax, let's all chill, and we'll pour a drink or two. We rarely have visitors to Iris Hill these days. We're just cooped up in this guest room, just having wild sex all over the place, <laughs> all over the rooms in every position imaginable. I require... You know what pegging is? I was not aware of it until recently. I don't recommend it. Important question, sir. A porn question? No. <laughs> An important oh, question. Sorry, my mind is always in the gutter. <laughs> Ask Just, your porn question. And Sir Julie leans in, her eyes suspicious. I may yet believe you. But first, you must describe for us in great detail how you incorporate the occult into your lovemaking. <laughs> it is the only way we can know for sure. <laughs> it is the only way to know for sure, yes. A fair question. Yeah. <laughs> well. <laughs> Sometimes when you read about what happens in worlds far away from here, <laughs> it really makes you wonder and question everything about yourself. So sometimes I need that to perform, as it were, because I have looked at every piece of pornography ever made <laughs> to the point where Nothing gets me going anymore. <laughs> but then one day, I saw a, a pamphlet for the Elder Mythos. <laughs> and damned if I didn't feel a stirring in my drawers. <laughs> I rushed home to Daylene and I threw her on the straw mattress and we went at it like cats and dogs. 
Consequently, that is what I learned about Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> Which again, I do not recommend. <laughs> Does that answer your question? <laughs> Sir Julie, look, we all, I looked at the others to be like, what do you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, a little too much information, I think. Too Atticus. much and not enough. Atticus is looking very suspiciously at the wine, and he's going to cast uh, Detect Magic again uh, and see if all these R's are coming from glasses of wine or wine bottles. If there's any magic, if the wine is magical. Okay, so you uh, detect some magic. The magic seems to be coming on uh, from their person. Um, you don't detect any magic on the wine itself. Okay. So it and he's still seems... like now the the woman has grabbed glasses and she's walking over. Please join us and in, in, in some wine. Don't listen to him. He is he is weird. Aldo <laughs> barges into the room. Bomb still raised. Just let me take a look at that wine. And he does a craft alchemy check on yeah. the wine. Okay. There we go. Uh, that is a 25. So you grab the wine away from Daylene Spence, and she's like, oh, ah, uh, wondering what you do with it. And you inspect it, and you smell it, and you smell poison. Ah. <laughs> So Aldo, like, he, t- like, sniffs it like a sommelier. Just, just like, oh, very interesting vintage, this. So, thank you. I don't partake myself. He puts it down, and he walks back over to the door and, like, claps Julie on the shoulder and turns his head back to look at them and says, kill them. Roll for initiative. Yeah. Oh, oh, no! Oh. Roll, kill, roll, 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 Oh, we have a lot what of fun. What is going on with these <laughs> dirt bags? It is. Sex crazy dirt sex bags. Crazy dirt. <laughs> Aldo, what did you get? Uh, I only got a 10. 10. Oof. Halster. Oh, wait, 12. 12. Cat's grace. Cat's grace. Nine. Nine for house. Nine. Nine. Yikes. Atticus. Uh, 24. Ooh. Ooh. Is that nat 20? Nat 19? Uh, Netty 17. Okay. Sir Julie Andrews. 15. 15 for Sir Jules. It's round one. And it's Atticus's turn. <laughs> You've got the jump on them. Aldo <laughs> claps Sir Julie on the shoulder and says, kill them. What do you do? Now, where are you guys? Are you all standing there outside of the building, essentially? Uh, yeah. It's a very tiny building. Yeah, I don't know how we would have all fit Place yourselves where you there. think you would. Watch Alistair go, like, way over behind the phone. I'm very intrigued <laughs> by this pegging they speak of. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to offer a few pointers. <laughs> uh, lubricant and poppers. Are you in there? You really think you're in there? <laughs> Not to put too fine a point on it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm right there. I'm right there. All right, so you moved in and were listening to them the whole time. Sure. Okay. Why not? Okay. 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 Uh, Atticus, wow us. It's a big, big opening salvo here. You've got the jump on these people. You don't know who they are. Yeah. You don't know what they're about. I think he's a little taken aback. I mean, he liked to, like get into the snobby nobility circles. He liked to like hobnob with these people. He thinks that it's not out of the realm of possibility at all that these like eccentric rich people could just show up and get involved in some creepy shit without really being that evil or vicious or anything like that. So he thinks we're jumping the gun a little bit uh, and doesn't know if they are poisoned, if this is part of the poison and Melisen is poisoning them and doing this thing. Uh, So he's a little like, oh, delays. Nobody thinks themselves into a corner like Joe (laughs) O'Brien. Well, no, it really is, though. With something like this, you kind of want to see what they do before you start using spell slots. You're cautious, and that's uh, there's a lot of buildings here. You don't know what you're going to get into. It now moves to Sir Julie's turn. Sir Julie Aldo said, kill them. Sir Julie 
noticed Aldo sniff the wine and then received this instruction. And trusting Aldo implicitly, draws her great sword as she yeah. walks into the room Yikes. and points it at them and says, you first, drink up. <gasps> Ooh. I, like, I like how you motioned like it was a dagger. Yeah. But it's like a but six a, foot that's sword. That's how strong like, she is. I'm very, I'm Drinks very, very up. strong. That's how <laughs> fucking Drink strong it. she is. They do not. Atticus will take his turn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you just yell, Drink it! What? What is the meaning of this? You seek to poison us? Why, of course. In Hasto's name. <gasps> oh. oh. You all shall fall. We will teach you the true meaning of pegging. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Housters, we're going to talk about this after the show. <laughs> Uh, okay. This is tricky because I, I, I don't want to just like great sword their asses when they don't have. I mean, they've threatened us, but they also have it. on weapons out. Like, it's hard. It is hard. For I will analogy. ready in action. Okay. If I sense a physical threat, I will strike the nearest one down. Fair enough. Um, I am a paragon of goodness. Right, right, right. No, you're playing your alignment hmm. and your character. Atticus? And Atticus will go now, uh, and with that response, I'm just, for right now, I'm going to draw a wand. So he draws a wand. Draws a wand. Move action. So you're saving your stand, Uh Oh, no, no yeah, actually, turn? sorry. I, I have it. So I will use it, and I will uh, use it on the woman right in front of Sir Julie and lift it up. Boop. We'll save. Ooh. Mm. All right. So you can see her just fine past Sir Julie's hulking epaulets. <laughs> we'll say. Here we go. So Many have described my epaulets as hulking. Hulking. <laughs> All right. Pretty good roll. Oh, you're fine then. Okay, it's an 18. Yeah, you're good. That was she, my turn. She looks at Sir Julie. Fool. <laughs> Quick draws a dagger and goes to attack you. My action interrupts. Please. Power attack is on. Furious yes. focus is on. Yes. Yes. Oh, baby. She's so dead, dude. Oh, my God. Phenomenal. Natural one. Oh! oh! Yes! Oh! Amazing! Amazing! We're so pegged. Where's your God now, Sir Julie? The thing will tumble. Chicago-based fan from Bonies? Uh, no. No. Uh, <laughs> we did, but those subscribers left after the yeah, Jesus. Yeah, they, they were quite religious. <laughs> Come for the Jesus, stay for the pegging jokes. <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm just not, I'm just not seeing them. All right, Midwest. Uh, all right, let's just go to Josh. From Omaha, Nebraska. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. Are there uh, any Joshes here tonight? Uh, Two women said woo. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good feminine name, Josh. Uh, the title is Can I Hold the Baby? Oh. Can As you strike out at your target, you slip and fall into your target. You automatically gain the grappled condition as your enemy is now holding you like a baby. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Oh, man. <laughs> reflex save negates because it is worse. <laughs> Roll a reflex save against like her one. AC. Fail. Four. Oh. Wow, so you immediately gain the grappled condition. But if so she was going to cast a spell. She does as well? Um, I would yeah. assume, right? Yeah. Basically grappling you. You see Asa in the back. Like what he sees. <laughs> oh, no. I feel like I need to take a shower now. Yeah, of course you would. He just go goes there. like this. Keeping this sexy image in his mind. We're having a good time. She will. 
in the flavor of this, what she does is she just takes her dagger and just starts stabbing you. But obviously she will release the grapple to do so. And she's going to go ahead and stab away with her with her knife, with her dagger that she quick drew. Mm. I want to get... Well, let me ask you this. I could still do that while grappling you. Yeah. And then do you... When you're grappled, you lose your dexterity bonus to AC, right? Yeah. You take, a, you take a penalty of some kind. And you lose your dex bonus, though? Yes? I'm going to do that because then she does sneak attack damage if oh, she hits. no. So she does hold on to you. She'll take a penalty to stab, but she just fucking stabs you in the neck. There you go. Grappled AC. Penalty to hit. Minus two. Just want to make sure. Yes. Okay. That's going to be. <laughs> really milking this. Look A like. 16. Miss. Come on! Ah! Troy's going to roll. Troy's going to roll. You're totally screwed. I just broke the chair out of the Chair's anger. broke. Yep. I have another slice of pizza, LaValle. <laughs> the, be- the best part is that's not the first time he's done that at a live show. <laughs> or in one of my homes. <laughs> <laughs> what I, was, a- I was so oh, fleet oh, of oh, foot oh. before children. <laughs> now I eat pizza every day. All right. That would have been great. Clanged off the armor. Clang off your neck armor. It is Aldo's turn. All right. Aldo says, Oh, enough of this. And he moves inside the building through, th- through Sir Julie's space, incurring an attack of opportunity. She's not going to take it. She's going to hold on to Sir Julie. Okay. So uh, he's still holding the bomb, and he says, Eat night palm, you fucking deviant! And smashes <laughs> the bomb right into her face. <laughs> Just a point blank. Bam! <laughs> King TV. <laughs> Again, incurring an attack of opportunity, should she wish to take one. Now I want to, but no. Uh, that is a that is a 15 against touch. That's a hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. buddy! Oh, explosion! 20 fire damage wow. against her. And then a reflex save from the other guy. Oh, God. So it's, she doesn't even get a reflex save because you hit her. So 20 fire damage. Yep. And then he gets... Oh, God. Okay. I just realized he's the one that had sneak attack, not her. Okay. I'm so, <laughs> I'm so dumb. 20? Tw- 20, 20 reflex, reflex save? Him, yeah. Okay, he's saved. So he takes uh, four points of damage. Four points of damage. It's a lot easier when I name the characters and not the AP. I can't remember who's Daylene and who's Aza. All right. You win this round, Aldo. Stop having secrets over there. Nobody likes secrets. I have no no idea what you're talking about. I hate you guys. I hate you guys so much. All right, it's Asa's turn. Asa Butterfield. He's in the back. He's right next to Halster there. Here's what he's going to do. He's going to five-foot step into this little squeezing corner which will take a penalty to the AC, but the reason he does is he wants to flank you can to try and fl- do sneak attack. Can he flank damage. with a character that's effectively grappling? That character doesn't threaten me. Why do you have to hurt me like that? <laughs> Why do you have to ask so Listen, many questions? I had plans for that squeezing corner, and they're being ruined right now by this <laughs> combat. Yes, you're being threatened. She could stab you if she wants. She really she could still slap okay. you. Yeah, she could. Okay. I chose not to, but she could technically, so All she right. is threatening you. Here we go dagger to the face. 18 to hit. Miss. Yes. Rough night for old Troy. It's all right. I always get mine. It is Halster's turn. Halster, this guy got you flanked now. What you do? I'm more concerned about Sir Julie at this point, even though Aldo just slammed a bomb right into Daylene's face, and Halster's going to help quicken her release of Sir Julie. Oh, uh, God, that is a 14 to hit. 14 to hit is a miss. Okay. Oh. It's his turn. That's his turn. Uh, 
you know, five foot step. New round. Atticus. So uh, mad, Sir Julie and then me. Sir Julie, then you? Yeah. No, you went, and Sir Julie then went after you because you went, it, the woman went to go, and that triggered Sir Julie. I know what my initiative tracker is. You're how, not wrong. How dare you embarrass me in front of that was correct. the entire city of Chicago. Sorry. They're all here. The They're whole here. city. It's like St. Patrick's Day. Fuck. This is a, uh, yeah, so this is a wild situation. He's looking into this place. Uh, it's just becoming a mad melee in there, but seeing their skill with a blade, he's getting nervous. Uh, I don't really know what else to do. Uh, right now, he's going to use the wand again on her. Fuck. Uh, so, we'll save. Damn it all. All right. Uh, correct die. Natural two. Oh. <laughs> Uh, is it a fail? What's the total? Uh, it's very low, DC. Eight. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, he puts out this wand. He just, just tries it. He shakes it. Like, Come on. Tries it one more time, and as it just sends this magical energy out towards her, he's just like, release her. That's a wand of command. And he commands her nice. to release Sir Julie. And she does. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, against her control, she releases Sir Jules. And now Sir Julie can go. And I shall strike her down. She that grips, one. grips the great sword with both hands. That one, that one, that one, Takes that a one. Swing. Fourteen to hit. Miss shit. Oh, oh, come on. Shit. Um, now go ahead. I'll take a five foot step back. Take all the steps you want, sister. <laughs> now. <laughs> I have her actual character sheet up. And shit's about to go down. Here's what I'm going to do. What did you have before? I would recommend I was looking at that earlier in the combat. <laughs> That's all right. I still think it was cool to try and stab you. Shut up. This is live. <laughs> she is going to try and cast a spell, which will require a uh, concentration check, but she has combat casting. Stop looking over my sheet, O'Brien. I'm not. Here we go. I'm just looking at your lion face. Uh, <laughs> made it. Plus 14. I rolled an 8, and I had hit DC 19. You happy now? Can you sleep with yourself? What? Troy, there's no reason to get defensive. Can you sleep with yourself? Shut up. What? All right. Which Joe, one? is that why you fell asleep so early last night? <laughs> Put that picture back up. All right. <laughs> <laughs> she casts a spell on Sir Julie. Oh, dear. Sir Julie, I need you to roll a will save, and this is not a fear effect. All right. Please fail. Please fail. 17. Fail. Oh, oh no. You want to tell her to let go of Sir Julie? She tells Sir Julie, leave Iris Hill. Oh. She has cast suggestion on you, and because you have failed, all you can now do is leave Iris Hill. Oh, no. One could argue once you're out past the gatehouse, you have left, and that would end the spell. But we'll talk about that later. Man. You're out of the combat! Ugh. This isn't an option. This isn't an option. Here we go. <laughs> Aldo's turn. Okay. Uh, Aldo sees Julie leaving and says, where are you going? You don't have to listen to her. And he goes up the stairs next to this woman. Okay. Um, and it's probably, I think upstairs, probably incurring again if she wants to take an, an AOO. You know what? I'll take it. It's just a little dagger. Miss. Okay. And uh, he says, seriously, fuck off! It takes another bomb, <laughs> throws it down on her face! Yeah! Uh, with a minus four, that is a 22 against Touch AC. Oh, yes! He's getting it. He's on fire right now. Uh, that's a hit. And so is she with a 16 damage. 16 damage. She is on her last legs. And I need a reflex save from the uh, dude. Oh, you got a 10-foot splash now? Yep. Gross. 
Uh, that is going to be a 18, an 18. Uh, okay, he makes it, so that is a four points of damage. And I keep forgetting, uh, they actually, she catches fire as well. <laughs> wow. Not Important surprisingly, detail. that also turns Asa yeah. on. <laughs> and it is his turn. He removes his hands from his pockets. Like Standard that. action. Standard action. <laughs> it's free action. Oh, 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 it's my turn, he says. He will... Oh, I can't flank anybody. He's shitty. She's cool. All right, he's going to do... Here's what he's going to do. He is going to five-foot step up to Halster and try to stab you with his dagger. And he's going to roll a natural two. Oh. He does suck. He Ice does. Cold. He's very distracted. He's got a lot going on in his pants. And it is Halster's turn. Halster, this guy's only been hit by splash damage. Who are you going to attack? You're going to attack Daylene Spence or Asa Laleth, if that's even their name. <laughs> if that's even your name. He's going to attack Daylene, and he is going to roll a natural two. With oh, a come miss. on. She's awesome. Ugh. He's going to five foot step back. I'm going to make her my new PC. She's great. Next round. Atticus, wow us. Shit. This is bad. This is bad. You see this look in Sir Julie's eyes. She just, like, turns from the battle and stares at the exit. And you're like, oh, fuck, oh, fuck, oh, fuck. I know what this is. They got to her. I know what this is. Um, Okay. He is going to... Fuck. And he's going to... Uh, sheathe the wand and he will close his eyes, do an incantation uh, and raise them as these white orbs burst from his hand, hover for a second and then at her and he'll cast magic missile yes, there you go we can't fuck around with this put one on her and two on the dude uh, oh, right, right, right. So let me do one. Uh, I'm not sure how far down she is. So that's three points of damage. Still up. Still up. Uh, two points of damage. Now nah, she's down. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Does that end the effect? What's that? Does that end the spell? No. No. Stop it. Uh, You're embarrassing yourself. And I would assume he can't do the third of the guy because of line of sight. Uh, it's up to you. Yeah, well, they're unerring, but you still have to have a line of sight to hit, so I'm going right. to say no. Okay. You can put a little salt So he'll put the, the third one at uh, Halster. Halster, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> four, naturally, four. four so that's damage. five points of damage. <laughs> Ouch! Take Son it. of a beast. I couldn't waste it! <laughs> Sir Julie, it's your turn. You must, with all haste, leave Iris Hill forever. Never In fact, come. I shall move with all haste. Sir Julie will run out of Iris Hill. Oh. Per the wording of the spell, though, the minute she steps out of the door, the spell ends. I know. And she halts and prepares to run back. At that moment, the gatehouse disappears and a hedge <laughs> grows in its place. It covers it? Yep. Oh, Here. shit. Sir Julie is now out of the adventure <laughs> forever. <laughs> what a way to go. What a way to go. You never, way never saw it coming. Never saw it coming. <laughs> You make one character with power attack. It's conspires to stop you from playing. <laughs> we'll miss you. No, we won't. It's uh, Aldo's turn. One enemy left that you can see. Although, Ooh. looking at Sir Julie running out, perhaps she is your enemy as well, you think. I Yeah, that's that's my first conclusion for sure. You are intelligent. Uh, I, gosh. All right. I'm running out of bombs here. And I'm actually out of candy box. Oh! oh. <laughs> Guess you can't throw any. I can't throw any. Game. So I can't. I can't throw it's any. It's October so, at midnight. I know. Um, he is going to drink another vial off of his off of his bandolier, okay. and he is going to cast shield on himself. Okay. Okay. I like it. Better to be safe than sorry, because Oof. now it's Ace's turn. This garbage, garbage character. 
He had this cool ability called Honeyed Words, which brings us back to our early Glass Cannon days. Uh, once per day, he can roll two dice while making a bluff check and take the better result. So when you first rolled that sense motive, I did just that. It still failed. <laughs> oh, shit stain. What do I want to do here? I can't flank you. I can't get that sneak attack bonus. He sees that this is this is a bad situation, but he doesn't want to upset House, uh, Hester, so he steps up and stabs away. Now they're natural, too. Yes! <laughs> so, he really has been frustrated. No wonder he's looking. <laughs> it's your turn. All right. Um, I'm going to slash out of him and hope that I crit. Uh, that is going to be a 24 to hit. There you go. Hit. All, All right. right. Uh, sacred damage. Lay it out. Swift, swift action. Uh, ooh, that's nice. That is going to be 16 points nice. of damage. 16 points of I'm damage. I'm sorry, 15, but. 15 points of damage. He is in really, really bad shape here. Sir Julie, you are now aware of what just happened, but you're very far away. What'd you do? I'll turn and run straight back. You you're exactly where I was. Really proud of yourself. It is Aldo's turn. Aldo, it looks like this guy's on the ropes. <laughs> uh, Aldo is, he's I going. I think you skipped, I think you skipped me. Oh. Perhaps. You're very forgettable. It is. He, he just killed. Well, he just killed her. He killed. You killed two creatures in these in two combats. That's true. Yeah. I, I meant Joe, not Atticus. Busy killing. Um, uh, I'm sorry. I did skip you. He's going to move over until he has line of sight on this guy and say, "How soon would you finish him off already?" And he's going to cast a frostbolt uh, at the guy. Frostbolt. Ray, Ray of frost. Ray of frost. Uh, against touch AC. Natural two. Oh. God damn it. Misses. Poop salad. Poop salad. That's why I skipped your turn. I knew it was going to be something I sad. I know, I know. I thought about just letting it go. It's like, <laughs> probably best for the show. <laughs> but I was like, maybe I could do something. <laughs> <laughs> nah. All right, Aldo. You've got shield on you. you got all this dex bone. This one guy left, and he looks like he's in rough shape. His lover lies dead on the floor. Aldo, with his, all of his, with this glowing, like, blue shimmering shield in front of him and his heightened reflexes, vaults over the railing of the staircase, lands right in the guts of this man's <laughs> dead lover. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Pulling out his sickle as he does so. Yeah. And swipes at his neck. Natural one. Oh, oh no! Oh, no! Oh, no. Amazing! The monsters will rumble, the decks they will tumble. Uh, where did fumble. it go? Fumble. fumble! Got any good bomb fumbles? Uh, that was a sickle fumble, so... Oh, sickle uh, fumble. We're going back to that fumble melee pool. Uh, Kiernan from Ontario, Canada. Hi, Kiernan. Uh, <laughs> Bluth Chicken Dance. <laughs> oh, come on! Oh, come come on. on! This is like a four-paragraph fumble. You ever yeah, seen a chicken? All right, so I pick him randomly. In a moment of arrogance, overconfidence, and just plain idiocy, you think you have your opponent on the ropes. True. You take a moment to showboat, taunt, or insult your opponent. Uh, you call also him a slur, true. or for a ridiculous dance, blah, blah, blah. Unfortunately, whatever you did has much more uh, inflammatory meaning in your opponent's culture. Roll another d20 with the same attack bonus as the attack that was fumbled on. If you succeed and the roll would not result in a hit... If you succeed and the roll would not result in a hit, Miss. all opponents with line of sight on you act as if under a rage spell for 1d4 rounds. If your roll would result in a miss, then all opponents with line of sight act as under a haste spell for 1d4 rounds. Wow. Wow. Wait, so he re-rolls. If it's a hit, it's haste, and if it's a miss, it's rage? The, the opposite. The opposite. Wow. Win-win. Either way, he gets this crazy buff. Uh, 14. It's a miss. So he gets haste. Awesome. Okay. Jesus. Cool, cool, kacha. Cool, cool, kacha. <laughs> yeah. Gaw, gaw, gaw. What did you say? Have you ever seen a chicken? Has anyone here ever seen a chicken? Wow, so he's going to get an extra attack, bonus to his AC, bonus to hit and damage. You just made him a lot better. And it's his turn. No. No. He's going to no. take two attacks. Can't watch At you that. for saying what you said. No. Forget I. Joe, can you. 
That tiny wiener, it fills up fast. <laughs> it's like a mid-sized sedan. <laughs> Here we go. I don't want to unpack that. We're having a good time. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, fuck. I wanted to flank with you. I was like, can I flank with Halster? All right, here we go. <laughs> Two attacks. Natural one. Oh! Yes! The monsters will rumble, the decks they will tumble, and fumble! Melee fumble. Yes. I think. This one comes from Kyle in Wellsville, New York. Hey! Oh, hey! Okay, it's called Whoop Whoop Whoop. <laughs> While rearranging your grip on a handle mid swing at a target, you accidentally and forcefully jam two fingers into your nearest ally's eyes. Oh, it's a Three Stooges thing. Oh. Or, whoop, or whoop, whoop, whoop. I thought it was an Arsenio Hall thing. No. <laughs> whoop, 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 whoop. Or you kick up some debris that flies into the nearest ally's eyes. If none are within melee range, your ally is blinded for 1d4 rounds. Reflux saving. So the saddest part of all of this is the miss blinds his now dead lover. <laughs> <laughs> Which, saddest part of all, is another one of his kinks. He then takes a second attack at Aldo because he's hasted 18 to hit. Miss. Come on! It glances my... off his mystical shield hovering in front of his face. Gross. Halster, you want to finish this combat? I hope so. Oh, that is a... No, that's a six, not a 19. <laughs> Damn it. 17 to hit total, though. Miss because of haste. Oh, no. Oh. New round. You know, this is, this is rough. These new rounds, they just keep eating at resources. Second building. Atticus, what do you do? Uh, How was the delay. bathroom? That doesn't need any resources. It's true. Sir Julie, you're back. Welcome back. Sir Julie will take a five-foot step and say, you shall not be in my head. And take a swing with the great sword. 20 to hit. That's a hit. Yes. There we go. Oh, yes. Even with the haste. Power attack, furious so, focus. So dead. Uh, 20 points of damage. As Asa falls. Yes. <laughs> he says, it was Daylene that was in your head. Not me. You dummy. Either way, it was all very hot. <laughs> <laughs> Famous last words. All right. <laughs> nice and he work. Died. All right. Nice work. That suggestion got scary. Good combat. Let's search good the bodies. Combo. He had a masterwork dagger. He had a mithril shirt. Ooh. I think you're all wearing plus one at this point, though, right? Yeah. Uh, if not, uh, not me. I don't know if I'm supposed to wear that. Maybe uh, I am. There's an mithril arcane shirt. Ten percent arcane spell fail chance. He has a potion of cure mod, and sadly, I didn't get to use my potion of invisibility Ooh. that he had as well. If that had gone on a little longer and you drank the wine, even if you passed the fortitude save, it was oil of Taggett, by the way. Talk about a callback. Oh, call back. Call back. Call back. First poison on the network comes wow. back in Chicago. Uh, if he had done that, I was going to like step back and visibility and start bipping and bopping, getting my sneak attack, but that's not how it happened. Because so that's all he has. And then uh, Daylene Spence. She was a sorcerer. She also has a masterwork dagger. She has an amulet of natural armor plus one. Ooh, Ooh juice. A ring of protection plus one. Ooh, Ooh, better. And a wand of scorching ray. Yeah! yeah. Wow. With 13 charges. Bam! Wow. Bam! She also has a nice pair of pearl earrings. Ooh. That no doubt were purchased for her from her former now dead lover. Lava. I Lava. take the pearl earrings and I wear them. They compliment with blood. They compliment my gleaming full plate. They look terrible on you. You also find a key, a single Ooh. key. That is what you find in this room. Let me just see if there's anything else in here if you want to do perceptions or whatever. Yeah, that's it. Uh, however, there are stairs going up. <laughs> I 
Can we do a roll off so we can end this? <laughs> Are you guys rolling off the ring of protection? I think so. Yes. <laughs> I already have. Who's already? in for a ring of protection? Uh, Anybody? This guy, him, her. I'm in. All right, everybody's in for the ring of protection. All right. Here we go. Come on, Atticus. Come on! Slow night. I don't know. I don't Natural know. one. Oh. oh! I want to hear Joe's. Oh, he's too happy. I got an 11. I got an 11! Oh. It's a roll! Oh, wait, 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 wait. Did Skid beat both of you? No, I got an 8. Oh, right. it's a roll off! It's a roll off. It's a roll off. It's a roll off for a ring of protection. We're still plus in this. One oh, it's a mean roll off. streets of Chicago. We're still in this. Let's say it at the same time. One, two, three. Two. Eighteen. <laughs> Atticus gets a Atticus. ring of protection. Atticus. Oh. Ring of protection plus one. Amazing. <laughs> what about the uh, God, amulet of fun? Amulet of natural armor. Plus right, one. here we go. Ready? I've already, I've already got one of those. Yeah, I have one of those, too. Hmm. You can just take it, I guess. Uh, no. I'll right, roll for it. Is covered you for want me. it? Anybody over here want it? Yeah. No? Uh, I would, I'd like it. All right, it's a Matthew versus Skid. No, Skid, you, you just take it. Skid. Oh, no, no, wow. No, let's do it. It's fun to roll off. All right, we do it. All right. <laughs> Crack die. 15. 12. Oh, yeah. yeah! You're a real loser tonight, Matthew. <laughs> I have a friend here tonight who has no idea what's anything yeah. that's going on. And last night I was like, "You don't have to come. I want to make sure you know you have the out." She came. Thank you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so my sorry. Favorite, one of my favorite things is like when something inconsequential, like winning an amulet, alarm <laughs> happens, and Skid will play Danger Zone. Or something. <laughs> like if you don't know what's going on, it's like, what is happening? Here? Right into the Danger Zone. All right, there are stairs going up. What do you lunatics do? Can I roll perception on the room and see if there's anything else? Ah, uh, sure. Fifteen. Fifteen, you say? Yes. No. We go upstairs. You go upstairs. I would like to direct you to the south of this map, as we are now going to go into another map. Ooh. Another map. Oh, uh-oh. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at that shit. Whoa. Whoa! Moving Whoa. on up to the second floor. All right. Let's see what's going on in here. It's the uh, stairwell. Ooh. There's a small landing atop the stairs with two doors leading to other rooms. That is the end of my description. Thank you. Uh, crushed it. <laughs> crushed it. Two doors. What do you do? Let's open the northern door immediately. So Julie kicks it open. You hear a baby cry. Ah! (laughs) There was a a baby standing on the other side of that door. Oh, no. And now it's dead. This upstairs is... You open the door, and beyond the dead baby, you see (laughs) a bedroom. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, o- I'm almost a little I'm a little afraid to roll a perception on to see what we find in this <laughs> I know, room. I know. Hold on, let me do a Google image search. <laughs> oh no. Come on. No, 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 no. Come on, we're having a good time. <laughs> there was a lavish bedroom containing a plush four-poster bed draped with lacy netting. It appears to have been recently used <laughs> early and often. A strange pole about seven inches long lays at the foot of the bed. At first you're like, what? Oh, I know what that is. <laughs> is it magical? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Depends who you ask. A fire burns in a ceramic stove in the western corner of the room and a large padlocked trunk 
sits in the southern Ooh. corner near a long That's what I'm writing talking desk. about. Do we find a journal or some letters? You do not, but you find some sexy drawings. Do those sexy drawings correspond with some evil plans that would help us to know? No, it's just uh, porn. <laughs> Can I detect magic? Can I walk in the room? And then uh, detect magic on the trunk? Okay. Uh, how did, what, what, is, what does that look like when you do that again? Oh, when I detect magic? Yeah. Like, do the, was there a hand flourish? There is. It's really fast. <laughs> It's over so quick, you wouldn't even. And then immediately, like, if it's there, it starts to glow. Does he see a glow? Um, Does he feel the presence of magic? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's worthless. He lights it on fire. <laughs> um, no, okay. Whatever you guys want to do. You want to open the trunk? Let's put the or key that we found on the body in the, in the yeah. lockbox, yeah. We'll watch out for traps. All right, do you put perception. the key in, and that is enough to bypass the trap that's on the chest. Oh! I was stalling because I couldn't remember if Detect Magic reveals magical traps on chests. It does. Somebody, I just go, it does. So I thought it better to lie to you than tell you about the trap. You didn't know if Detect Magic detected the magical (laughs) trap? (laughs) I thought it might. (laughs) Oh. But I wanted to err on on the side of... Lying. Me winning. Okay. But you win in the end because you didn't set off the trap by using the key Understood. that you found on Daylene's body. <laughs> I stand by my decision. The large trunk is full of fine clothes, jewelry, lots of wine and whiskey. It's also 24 nobles' outfits worth 75 gold pieces each, 12 bottles of wine worth 150 gold pieces total, and a jewelry box made of palm wood worth 50 gold pieces containing 1,800 gold pieces worth of rings, bracelets, brooches, and necklaces. Brooches. Oh, fabulous. There are also a dozen anal beads and dildos. (laughs) (laughs) Of the finest make. <laughs> Masterwork. <laughs> Anal Master, beads. Master Sir Julia work. leans over Atticus and looks down at the contents. Shuts the chest. I'm confiscating this. <laughs> <laughs> well, she is a paragon of good. On behalf of my religious order. On, beha- on behalf of the Dawnflower. <laughs> <laughs> she shoves <laughs> some into her... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Atticus is actually going to take some of the uh, bracelets and, uh, and necklaces and, like, the adornments, and he's going to put some of them on. Well, he's a fancy guy. Yeah, he's going to be like... The beaded necklaces. Oh, this will greatly... <laughs> he's nothing if he's me. not gaudy. All right, uh, and that's all you see in uh, this room. A room. Whatever you call it. <laughs> Under the bed, nothing. Uh, there is a gimp. Oh, no. With just a zipper over his mouth. (laughs) Oh, my. And he's tied up. No, I don't... For safety's sake, he's not there. (laughs) Because I don't know where this is going to go. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You don't want to dangle that in front of us. (laughs) All right, we go to the other door and kick it open. Isn't that what he's called in Pulp Fiction? Yeah. Uh, You go to the other room? Yep. Wow. Go in the other room. You just stampede in there? Yep. Yep. Okay. Baby uh, or not. Heedlessly. Here we come. Heedlessly, you go into this difficult to reveal angular room. 
It's a square. It's a square. But it's on its side. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see what you're saying, yeah. It is a solarium. Ooh. Large oh. windows. Star Starcraft. Span two of the walls of this whitewashed room, allowing in a, a little bit of warm sunlight on this otherwise gloomy day. There's an air of luxury to the room. And you think that, like, this must be where Iris Hill's most honored guests would stay when visiting the Count or the Count's family before the Count was the Count. When the Count was just a wee boy, and this was the room that perhaps Melisen gave to Asa and Daylene, worshippers of the King in Yellow. Nothing else of import in this room. All right. Let us move on while we still have our spells active. To the next house, quickly. Hurry. I want to get more into this show. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> you rush. God, I love the Lincoln Hall balcony. I love it. <laughs> I do too. So awesome. You guys, yes. I see you, yes. If any of you jostle our cameras, I'll kill you. <laughs> All right, how long are these buffs you have on? What's the time limit? Don't Rounds worry about or it. Or minutes? Five hours. It's not five hours, is it really? A mage armor is. What about you? Let's start it before we got in here. Jerks. Good. You're good? <laughs> good answer, Skid. All right, what do you do? Perception at the door. Detect magic at the building. Two small buildings down. One to go. 18 perception. Nothing. Is Nod that magic? Alter. Magic. Presence. Magic. Boom! Breach and clear. Yeah. Booge, he says, as he booges down the door. Oh, baby. What's going on in this room? Are you, are you stalling again? Do you have to look it up? No, I'm just dramatic effect. Shut up. <laughs> this looks like a, a carriage house. The smell of freshly turned earth fills the room when you open the door. And behind the large black carriage that is in this room that nearly fills the space, it's not on the map. Use your imagination. It's part of the game. How did it get in? Oh, I see. Behind <laughs> this carriage, near a wall hung with tools and various pieces of tack, is a hole nearly five feet wide. There is also a door leading to another room on this floor. Uh, cautiously approach the hole and look down into it. You look down into the dark hole. <laughs> <laughs> and you see a pit descending downward that looks scalable. Freshly dug, recently dug, goes down underground. Can we see the bottom? You cannot. I cast light on a stone or on a coin and drop it down. A stone would cost less. This is a nice stone. The coin goes and you see just a, a faint light about 60 feet or so down hit the floor of a cavern floor beneath. Oh, wow. Atticus. Yes, are, Sir Julie. You are the lightest. I'll belay. She, she grabs the rope and just sets herself up. Are you out of your mind? What is down there? I'm not going down there without knowing what's there. Well, I, I, well, I resent no, you. He'll walk down over. down there until one of us goes down He'll there. walk over and Precisely. look down as well. She'll start fitting the rope around your waist. Yeah, no. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll, I've got you. All right. <laughs> and the curiosity starts getting the better of him. The idea that there could be jewels down there or something of value. <laughs> surely Jewel, a pile of jewels. Yes, yeah, surely there's a pile of jewels down there. Come on. <laughs> you never know. People hide their valuables in the strangest places. There's at least one coin down there, Atticus, and you can have it if you go get it. <laughs> you can. Don't talk down to me. 
It was standard practice amongst the patients of Briarstone to bury all of their valuables 60 feet below the earth. <laughs> I thought that perfectly reasonable. <laughs> all right. Have your way. He's going to draw out a wand and hold it in his main hand with this rope around his waist. Say, lower me down. <laughs> this is so bad. He's <laughs> going to die because of this. And I like Atticus. And he begins going down into this dark, dark hole. Yeah. Atticus grabs the rope and begins going down this hole. Sir Julie lowering him slowly towards the light of this coin. <laughs> Let's go to another map. Oh. This is fucking crazy. I have another whole are. page. Yeah, another whole oh, page. Whoa. And you know what? I'll just put boop. Atticus right there. Whoa. All alone. Tug twice if you're in danger. <laughs> you see a cavern. Uh, I'll give you a little flave. It's a natural cave, and it's illuminated by large floor lanterns that must have been placed there recently. They look of modern make. The cavern extends from east to west, slightly ascending up to what looks and sounds like a pool of water on a raised shelf in the back. I will reveal that. Shadows on the wall, dancing from the glimmering of the water. Ooh, what okay. does Atticus and Atticus alone do? He's going to like make sure the rope is still there. Wand in hand. He's going to start walking slowly up the ramp toward the water. Little by little. Perception check. It'll be meaningless. Fourteen. Fourteen. Scent. <laughs> He's sniffing the air. Sniffing the air, eh? Let's go check something on my iPad real quick. Just want to see the score of the Jags Bengals game. Sir Definitely. Julie gets distracted by some of the uh, the horse tack on the wall and drops the rope. It just oh, it's <laughs> 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 I kid, I kid. There is a strange. <laughs> otherworldly smell in the room, but you see nothing but that water that just seems to be drawing you ever towards it. He looks across at the water. He's going to... He's very afraid. Oh dear. He's going to grasp his talisman of revealing. Burn a first level spell repurpose it to detect aberration. Uh, so this is the thing where there's a list of creatures that if it's on the list, he can still detect the, it, the presence. I hear people laughing. It, um, this is not funny. I'm so scared. This is the list. Oh, I looked at the list earlier today. And this is why this game is so fucking great. Because he's pulled out this list a dozen times. Not always on stage, sometimes before the show. Can you look at this again? Can you look at this again? And it has never yielded fruit. Until now. Oh. Oh, I love this crowd! <laughs> Your mind has been swapped with a creature from another world, a Yithian. You talked about this recently. Yeah. 
Christ. Nothing you really delved into, but something happened to you in your past where you basically sacrificed your soul to try and gain knowledge that you should not have. But in the gaining of that knowledge, you have this preternatural connection and prescience about creatures from the beyond. Pre-science. And you're always, that part of your brain is always searching to try and connect those, those dots, that cognitive dissonance, trying to find out, reaching out to try and feel if those things are near. And you feel it. And just as you feel it, two creatures emerge from the water and they float up, just water dripping off of them. They are barrel shaped with, with these star shaped heads and several writhing appendages raiding out from them from all angles. And as they come out, they begin speaking in a language that you feel like you know, but you don't. It sounds like pipe sounds and shrill children's cries. And they seem angry and they float towards you. They are creatures known as elder things. And they look like this. Oh! And we'll see you in Columbus. Oh! Oh, he's all alone. Oh, buddy, no. Look at that thing. Oh my God. So bad. So bad. Thank you, Chicago! Thank you, Chicago!